this is the Nokia C110. And as of late 2023, it's the cheapest smartphone that you can buy at Walmart. Coming in at around $30, does it pack some bang for that buck? Or is it something you should stay away from? Well, today we're going to find out. I'll not only unbox this phone for you guys, but I'll also be doing a review on it as well. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so first, let's go ahead and unbox this phone and show you guys what's inside. Now, I will be honest, I did take a peek at this phone, which is why the seal is broken right here, but all I did was take it out of the box, look at it once, and put it back inside. So, I still have no idea how this thing runs, I haven't peeled the screen or anything like that. We're gonna do that all on camera today. So, let's open up this top flap. Pull out the inner box itself, and as you can see, there's the phone right there. Let's take this plastic piece off of the top, shake out the phone, and put that to the side. Now, besides the phone, it looks like you have a charging brick, a USB-C cable, a SIM eject tool, and some paperwork. We've got a Nokia manual right there, a start guide right here, stuff like that, and standard straight talk manuals as well. Let's go ahead and put all the trash to the side. At a first glance, it looks like the bezels on this phone are gonna be giant, but honestly, what can you expect for $30? The phone has a tempered glass screen. The frame and the back panel of this phone are made of plastic and it is ridged. You can hear it right there. So it gives a little bit of a texture as well. We've got a single rear facing camera, a single flash, track phone logo, Nokia logo, and a loudspeaker right there. Looking at the top of the phone, it looks like we have a microphone hole right there and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right there as well. Around the right side of the phone, we've got our power button and our volume switch. On the bottom, we've got the Type-C charging cable and another microphone. And on the final side, it looks like we have the SIM tray. So let's go ahead and peel the screen and power the device on. While this is booting up, I'm gonna tell you guys a few specs about this phone. So the screen is a 6.3 inch 720p display. We've got a five megapixel front facing camera right there, a surprising 13 megapixel rear facing camera right there. The processor is a MediaTek MT6762 eight core, two gigahertz processor. The device has 32 gigs of internal storage and a surprising three gigs of RAM. So on paper, this device actually seems pretty good, but that's all up to speculation. We've got to set this thing up and I'll show you guys how it actually runs. While we're setting up the phone, let's go ahead and view these viewing angles. They really do not look good, which it's to be expected. I mean, the phone costs $29.98, so I'm really not expecting much here. As long as this gets the job done, Anything extra is just a plus. While I'm setting this up, one thing I did forget to mention is that this does have a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is really not that much. I definitely expect this thing to perform pretty poorly when it comes to the battery, but at the same time, it's also low end, so who really knows? I decided to switch to my normal view for now so that I can show you the bezels on this screen and how the screen looks in general. So, as you can see, the bottom bezel is pretty large, the sides are pretty normal, and then we've got a small bezel on the top as well. If I bring the phone super close to you guys, you can definitely see some of the pixels in the screen right there, but it's really not too bad. Like I said, this is a 720p display, so if you have it far enough from your face, you're really not going to notice that. Now, as for the lock screen options, let's see what we got. We've only got a pattern, pin, and a password, so no kind of crappy face unlock or anything like that. This obviously does not have a fingerprint scanner, so that's definitely something to take into account. But like I keep saying, it's $30. I really don't expect anything but the basics here. That's funny, it does mention face unlock on the top right there, even though it doesn't even have it. We've got some track phone stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of that off because I don't care about it. HMD, I have no idea what that is. As long as I am not subscribed to it, 
uh, you know, my device app. My device is the app that helps you get the most out of your Nokia for longer. Blah, 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 blah. I don't care. Is that it? That looks like it's it. All right, here is the home screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my normal lens so that I can show you guys this screen a little bit better. Okay, so right off the bat, we've got some sort of track phone app right there. And unfortunately, we've got some pre-installed apps as well, such as Facebook. Wow, that was, uh, that was speedy for sure. That first swipe was really not that fast. Um, let's go ahead and get a feel for how this thing would run. Okay, it's getting a little bit faster, but it's really, really not that good. It looks like they did not optimize Android to run on a curved screen. As you can see, all the icons right here are way off to the side. Same with on the left-hand side, the battery indicator is basically being cut off. All right, so as you can see, I've got a couple of apps and games downloading for this phone. They are taking absolutely forever. But while those are downloading, I would like to say that one thing I appreciate is that this is running a fairly stock version of Android, which is nice because when there's a lot of bloatware and a lot of skins, these devices, especially the cheaper ones, tend to run like crap compared to those that just run stock Android. As you can see, now that this is set up, it's kind of actually not that bad. It's pretty quick. All right, so as you can see, I've got some Wow, I, that's insane. Sorry, I just realized it literally installed a couple of apps just randomly. Didn't even ask if I wanted those apps to be installed. It just did it. So let's see what it installed. We've got a Discover app right here. No idea what that is. A My Account app, Pandora, whatever that is, Chime, Timu, and Solitaire. Let's go ahead and get rid of those because I, I never installed those and I don't want them on this phone. Okay, back to what I was saying. I've gone ahead and installed a couple of apps. We've got eBay and Firefox. Those are the only apps I installed because I really didn't want to put too much on this phone. We've got Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy, an air hockey app. We've got Granny, 3D Bowling. Uh, I don't remember the full name of this game, but it's it's a pretty fun game. And then we've got Tomb of the Mask. Look, there it is, installing even more crap that I really do not want. That's honestly ridiculous, but at the same time, this phone is $30, and I'm sure they're making a little bit extra money by having those apps automatically install onto their phones. I can't really knock them for that, because they've really got to get the best bang for their own buck out of this phone. But nonetheless, that is still super, super annoying. See, look, once again, installing random crap. But I think that's going to be the end of it. As you can see, it says setup complete. So we'll see, we'll, we'll just see. So what I wanna do right now is open up some random apps just to see how quick this thing actually is. Let's go ahead and first open up the camera. I did set up location, so that's why this didn't come up, but it loads up pretty quick. Let's go ahead and open Chrome. Okay. Messages app. Let's try out YouTube and see how fast that loads. All right, not, not too bad, not too bad. Oh, okay, awesome. And all while those are in the background, this phone is still pretty darn smooth. It's definitely smoothed up a lot since I first unboxed it. Let's try out eBay. And let's just look for, I don't know, Galaxy S22. Okay. Keep in mind that while I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I'm outside if you can't already tell. So it's going to be definitely slower than it would be if I were inside of my house closer to my router. But nonetheless, that's still not too bad. Let's go ahead and try Firefox and let's see if we can open up a web page. Uh, let's look up Liam Does Tech on YouTube. And let's load my YouTube page right here, or try. Looks like it's frozen, just a little bit. 
Oh, ah, there we go. It was just that little thing right there. Let's try one more time. And okay, not bad, really not bad. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and try to open up a very simplistic game. So I've got, like I said, two games right here. These are both so old that they've run on Android 2 devices, at least when I last checked. I had these installed on the Android 2 devices, so if they do not run here, I'm going to be insanely surprised. Let's try 3D bowling first. Can you tell these are made for super old phones? <laughs> Look at these graphics, man. This is wild. Let's go with this ball right here and hit play now. One player. Uh, how do I... Ah, okay. Okay, uh, let's try that. Well, alright. I've never been gifted when it comes to bowling, okay? Oh. I take it back. Ooh, that gave me a great idea. Let's go ahead and turn the volume up all the way and see how loud this actually gets. Let's see if I can get a strike again. Yeah. Okay, all right, not too bad. Let's go ahead and try out another game. Let's do air hockey. This has to be even more simple than the 3D bowling game. Now it looks like the touch is definitely delayed if you can't really tell. That is definitely delayed. I don't know if that's just the game, but I'd assume it has to do with the touch screen as well. But I still made a goal. That is definitely one of the reasons I wanted to try out this game is because I was curious about the touchscreen, whether it was going to be pretty good or, uh, you know, not so good. And yeah, it's definitely really not that good. With that being said, let's go ahead and try out another simple 2D game called, oh, what is this called? Oh, it's just called Dune. Okay. Okay. How do I play this? All right. There we go. The vibration motor on this phone is really... it's something. I've got a little bit of lag right there. We'll see if that goes away once the game fully loads. Oop, alright. I misjudged. Nope, it looks like that lag is sticking with us for sure. But seriously, this is really, really not that good, especially with a 2D game. This should definitely run a little better. It has its hiccups. It's not the worst. But uh, yeah, it could definitely do better. With that being said, let's go ahead and try out Tomb of the Mask. Now, this is a game that I have played till the end like three times. It is such a fun game. If you guys have never downloaded it, please give it a try. This is definitely not sponsored in any way, but I just wanted to give a shout out because it's such a good game. Okay, that really does not sound very good. Okay. Awesome. This runs so much better than Dune. Let's go through one more level and then we'll go ahead and try Granny. Awesome, man. Like I said, if you guys have never checked out this game, Go ahead, it is so fun to play. But with that being said, let's go ahead and try Granny. All right, I think what I wanna do is keep the quality at medium. We'll keep the difficulty at, let's do easy just for now. And uh, yeah, we'll leave everything else as is. One sucky part is if you're holding the phone like this, you're going to definitely be covering this loudspeaker every time you hold it. I wish they put it like maybe right here, but it is a lot easier just to have it facing outwards just like that. 
this is going to be a kind of hard game to show because it's kind of based in the dark, but this is a 3D game. Oh, and it looks like she already found me. Let's see what I can do about that. Oh, <laughs> alright. Well, I got away. I don't know how. That's so insane. Yep, now you see me. Okay, yep, the touch on this phone is very finicky. I can already tell. Which is definitely going to make games a lot harder to play. Yep, this is, uh... <laughs> it's, uh... It is definitely not fun to play. Let's see what happens when she gets me. Let's go ahead and see how long it takes to load into the second day. Okay, not too bad. There's a plane above me. I would enjoy it if you flew a little bit faster. That thing looks awesome. Now the last game I want to try is Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. This is probably going to make me... <laughs> this is probably going to upset me because this game is all about stress and it's all about precision. So this phone is definitely not built for that. We're going to go ahead and try it anyways. This is definitely taking a while to load. Yep, alright, so it looks like it's cut off the notch right there. So that's, that's, a, that's a little bit funny. Oh, that's laggy. Oof. Why is... That's so weird. I've played this game on multiple phones and I've never had that issue before. Oh, this is gonna... Oh my god. Oh my god. I think I'm gonna make it. I think we'll make it. Nope. Oh my god. Okay, yep. Alright. No, we'll, we'll keep trying. We'll keep trying. Oh, we did it. We did it. All right. Awesome. Oh, you see all the movement that I'm making and it's just doing nothing on the screen. That... Uh -huh, uh -huh. I really don't need you talking over me. All this movement and nothing's happening on the game. <sighs> see, just like that. This touchscreen is really, really not the best, but in all fairness, this phone was not made to game, so the fact that it runs things in general is honestly pretty impressive. So with all the games and apps out of the way, let's go ahead and test out these cameras. This is going to be the video test and microphone test for the Nokia C110. As you can see, this is my recording setup right here. We've got my main phone, a Galaxy S22 Plus. Super nice phone. This thing records amazing videos. And we've got a giant tripod right here. I am sitting super awkwardly on this chair. We've got a box for the Nokia C110 right here. We've got some beautiful plants right here and some blue water 
right here. Let's see if we can zoom in on these plants right over here. That's, uh, that's about all we can zoom in for. It's really, really not that good. Let's try again with this right here. The color of this thing is definitely different on camera than what I'm seeing with my own two eyes. This is teal in person, and as you can see on video, it is definitely blue. But when I pan out to the pool right here, this looks just about similar to what I'm seeing with my own eyes. So I guess it's up to just certain colors. This thing does not make them out very well. Here is a nice blue pot with a small little plant in it. As you can see, this is how big it is. And uh, let's go ahead and just get super up close until this thing cannot focus on that plant anymore. Oh, oh, nope, it's still going, still going. Yep, I think that's about our limit. Really, that's not bad at all. I was expecting something much less, but that means you can go ahead and get super up close to this thing and have it still autofocus on you. With the video test out of the way, let's get back to the video. Okay, so the camera test is done, and honestly, from what I can tell, it's really not bad. This is a quite impressive camera for $30. It's definitely much more than what I expected it to be. The video quality is okay. Camera quality is pretty good, although in the viewfinder, there's a definite difference between what's on the viewfinder and what comes out after image processing. But that's not a bad thing. The image processing is something that helps out a lot of these budget phones and saves them from being such a pile of crap. Now, I am also curious if this has gestures instead of these three buttons at the bottom right here. We might be able to go... Uh, no, unfortunately it does not. But that's okay. You know, I prefer gestures on my phone versus the standard Android layout, but I can't expect much out of this phone. This is a definitely stripped version of Android. It doesn't have the most features like, let's say, my Galaxy S22 Plus, but honestly, what can you really expect, you know? With that being said, before I end this video today, I would like to try out one more thing. Now, something I use a lot, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well, is Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Now, obviously, this is an Android phone. It has Android 12, so I'd assume it has Android Auto, but there's only one way to check that. And this is going to be the first time I am testing this out on this phone, so if it has it, that's going to be quite surprising. Well, it looks like it's pulling up nothing, but I have a little trick up my sleeve. Ah, oh, there it goes, there it goes. All right. And well, I have it connected, but let's go ahead and try it again, just to be sure. You know what, I've tried everything I can, and to be honest, it's not pulling anything up. Now this might not be the phone's issue, I do not have it connected to Wi-Fi at all right now, and it's obviously not hooked up to any service, so it might just be that. But unfortunately, as you can tell, it is not working. This might be different for some other people, whether they get service on this phone or not, but for my case, it's not gonna work. Now, as unfortunate as it is, I was not able to get Android Auto to work on this phone. For some reason, it doesn't want to do file transferring or Android Auto or any of that kind of stuff. Now, like I said, this might just be because I did not have it connected to internet, and that would be the very first time I am opening Android Auto, so maybe that has to do with it. But in the case that it doesn't work on this phone, that is a big thing that a lot of people use in their cars nowadays. When it comes to me personally, I have not touched the radio in my car for over a year. The last time I touched it was just to mess around. I use Spotify all the time. Um, I have no use for the radio. So Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are definitely a big part of my driving experience. So all in all, I definitely recommend this phone. Whether you guys are on a tight budget, you need something for your kids, or maybe you are uh, selling or buying something you probably shouldn't be selling or buying. Regardless of the case, 
this is definitely $30 well spent. So I hope you guys enjoyed the unboxing and review of the Nokia C110. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content just like this, feel free to subscribe and turn on post notifications. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace out.